Hello and welcome to Daily Records. I am Tommy Burton. And today's record is the classic Odyssey and Oracle by the Zombies. This was released on April 19th, 1968. This was the only the second album by uh, the Zombies who were an English uh, rock band. Uh, and it came out on the CBS label. And it was recorded in about three months between June and August uh, at Abbey Road Studios, as well as Olympic Studios. Uh, and of course, this, the album is most uh, well-known by the, the single uh, Time of the Season, which was a huge hit. And Rolling Stone listed this one as one of the uh, greatest albums of all time in the top 500 uh, on that list. So a lot of albums in there. But uh, this was uh, kind of an interesting release. Um it definitely, sort of to me, falls in the vein of, of that sort of uh, Sgt. Pepper uh, English uh, sound, kind of whimsical. Uh, the album opens with a, a, an interesting track, Care of Cell 44, uh, a, you know, a song about uh, a woman coming home uh, from prison after a prison sentence. Uh, and so, uh, A Rose for Emily, just a beautiful uh, ballad. Uh, Beechwood Park. Uh, a lot of people know the song This Will Be Our Year. Uh, you know, I think it was used in Mad Men, fans of Mad Men. Shout out there. But, uh, you know, an album that's that's really grown in stature. Now, the album was championed early on by Al Cooper. Uh, from what I understand, CBS did not want to put the album out. And really, in, essentially, after the recording of this album, the, the zombies broke up. They, they were no more. Um, but it is closely related to Sgt. Pepper. They use the same, uh, tape machine. Uh, of course, those of you who know the zombies, uh, Rod Argent, uh, one of the main guys, uh, behind them. Uh, and of course, Chris White, uh, also, um, uh, one of the main, main zombies behind this album. And, um, they mixed the album. Rod Argent and Chris White had mixed this album down to mono. Uh, and then when they gave the master over to CBS, they were like, you know what? You, you gotta have a stereo mix. And uh, the recording budget was, was blown. And so what happened is that Argent and White, uh, they took their own money to, to pay for the stereo mix just to make sure that it was done right. But uh, one of the big problems was uh, on this, this will be our year, uh, when it, the stereo mix, uh, they found that the producer, Ken Jones, when he dubbed the horn parts on there, uh, they were right on the mono mix. So the horns... Uh, were on the multi-track, so they the fake stereo mix had to be made uh, for the mono. So, it, you know, it was interesting. But but by the end of this, they, they were really uh, at each other. Um, and so they played their final gig in December of 67 and, and broke up. Um, now, Rod Argent creatively was, was behind a lot of what was going on in this album. Uh, and Time of the Season became this sort of surprise hit. I mean, the album slowly built, and because of Time of the Season, uh, that that's where the album took off. Now, CBS, uh, you know, this is one of those, everybody talks about Clive Davis, uh, the magic ear of Clive Davis. He didn't want to release the album. Um, they had released the single for Care of Cell 44, and um, nobody cared. It just, like, it just was never went anywhere. But uh, Al Cooper, who, who was a producer there, uh, he was like, you got to do it. So they put it out on their subsidiary, uh, Date Records, uh, and, and, and released it. And it went on to become uh, a, a, a big hit, and it, it grew in stature. Uh, and funny enough, putting, putting the band uh, back together uh, for, mo for more music. But, but fans of that late 60s uh, sort of psychedelic uh, sound, I, I don't know what psychedelic really means I, I i get it i i do know what it means but at the same time i um i i, I just kind of have I, I don't know it's a weird it's a weird word to me um and so like a lot of people say the beatles are psychedelic and and i don't hear it um but that's just you know that's a personal thing but it is a a beautiful uh you know album uh and it, i'm not gonna not mention here the the wonderful singing of uh, Colin Blundstone. Um, of course, Colin had a lot of issues uh, during the recording, in particular of time of the season. Uh, Blundstone didn't like the song. Uh, and so Rod Argent just, you know, he wanted him to sing it a certain way. And um, 
he eventually just told told Rod to sing it himself, and uh, and Rod did. Uh, but uh, Blundstone later later did the vocals. But but Colin Blundstone is one of the one of the great uh, vocalists of pop music. Uh, just really good stuff. And they were the zombies uh, to me that sort of sets them apart from a lot of uh, other bands around this time. Was bands like the Stones and even the Beatles. A lot of their music was was based in rhythm and blues. And and the zombies and, and maybe because of of Rod Argent was. A lot of, there was a lot of jazz influence there, uh, and so I think that that jazz influence uh, really, uh, you know, it came through in in the in the music, and it made the arrangements uh, far more interesting uh, to listen to. Uh, so it set them apart from a lot of the uh, other bands around that time that were sort of basing a lot of their sound in in sort of traditional rhythm and blues and American music. Um, you know, Argent. Rod Argent's a jazz guy, and it, it showed uh, with the Zombies. But uh, Odyssey and Oracle, one of the uh, beloved 60s albums, and rightfully so, today's daily record. Like, comment, sh- share, subscribe, interact. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. It's Tommy Burton 75 I love hearing from you guys. But in the meantime, oh, check out my other channel. I have a regular VC channel uh, that I go into more detail on these records. Uh Love, love meeting and talking to you guys. Uh, So in the meantime, I'll see you all tomorrow with another daily record.